seem so good. <laughs> I am inclined to tune in just like I should. Ooh. All right, so Sarah. So good, so good. All right, so number nine, Mr. Met is an iconic baseball mascot. He's been part of the Mets since 1964. But one time, they thought it would be a good idea to replace him with a live mule. Mm. This was in 1976, and Mr. Met was missing in action at Chase Stadium. The owner, Joan Payson, died, and her daughter took over as president of the team. She wanted to save some money and thought, hey, a live goat could be a better boost to team and fan more. Morale. So the Mets finished the season with the worst record in their division, and attendance was the lowest in the team's history. The following year, the new owner came in. Of course, they ditched the mule. Wasn't quick to bring back the mascot, though. Mr. Met didn't return till the yeah. 90s. Huh. Turn everything around for him. Yeah, they, they, they've got it figured out now. Blame it on the mule. Yeah. All right, uh, number eight, if you're like me, you probably look at this heart-shaped cake and you think, gee whiz, I'm a failure. I could never make a cake like that for my beloved. But I'm telling you right now that you're wrong. Get yourself some cake shapers. They look like uh, plastic toy railroad tracks. And you can lock them together just like that to make a heart or a cake for your strange son's eighth birthday or something like that. See, isn't that nice? Nice. Oh, it's I, an eight. Yeah, you can, okay. you can do it. So just get out there. It's just 15 bucks. You can change your life. And maybe even get your eight-year-old son that you're estranged from back. <laughs> so I didn't know where you were going cake. with that shape at first. Yeah, it's an eight. Got it. A good one. All right, number seven. Uranus smells like rotten eggs. Scientists <laughs> say it's filled with hydrogen sulfide, and that's what causes the odor. Every man in the studio yeah. just cracked You're not up the like, person I'm to not say lying. that. I'm yeah. smiling too, but yeah. You're probably asking yourself, how do scientists know what Uranus smells like? Well, yeah. it's 1.6 miles away. They're, they've never been close enough to Uranus to smell it for themselves. They use a special space telescope to observe oh. the clouds and gases like and probe. that's how they detected the molecule you'll never be able to smell it for yourself ah. nobody will unlike the moon uranus is unexplorable it has what? minus 200 degree atmospheric conditions mm. it sounds like a challenge to me <laughs> yeah larry spitting knowledge sure this morning. yeah that was science. a great read larry science sure. yeah you're welcome kids <laughs> All right, number six. Back in 1954, the FCC got its first complaints about loud commercials on TV. Well, since then, advertisers have been trying to get their promotions on the air at a volume that's a little higher than the show it airs in the middle of. The idea is you'll take notice. Well, now that people are streaming shows like crazy, complaints about loud commercials have shot up 140% since last November. Back in 2011, a law called the Calm Act was passed to rein in loud commercials. It says that ads should only be as loud as the dialogue on the show, but the FCC hasn't enforced it pretty much ever. That's because it's really hard to measure and track. People can keep complaining, but we should all probably we get used to loud commercials that's because streaming content is not written into the law mm -hmm. mm. all right number five meatloaf is delicious but did you know it was created out of hardship in the 1940s advertisements like this were everywhere urging home cooks to be more creative with their dinners meatloaf allowed people to use cheaper more available cuts of meat and save money and by mixing them with ingredients like breadcrumbs and eggs this is a budgetary thing. Yeah. Larry, do you eat meatloaf? No. Not no. on your recipe book. Huh? No, my mother used to make it, though. Uh, I like meatloaf. She ruined it for you, huh? Yeah, well, it wasn't that much different than her hamburgers. They were both terrible. <laughs> it's very similar. <laughs> the ketchup is just inside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, you know. Pretty anyway. Uh, Fortunately, she doesn't watch this show. Yeah. <laughs> uh, number four, we're not sure when the cruise industry will be fully open again, but when it does, there are two versions of the Titanic in the works, Titanic 2 in Australia and the unsinkable Titanic in China. Both ships are in planning stages and in need of more funding, but they're both designed to look almost exactly like the original. From the grand staircase to the luxury staterooms, there's one big difference, though. Each ship will have double the amount of lifeboats on board. No word on when or if they'll be completed.
Who is signing up for Titanic 2? Not it. Hmm. I wouldn't want to do that. All right, we're going to stick with the travel theme here. Number three, planning to travel this summer. If you book a trip to Malta, they'll pay you. The Mediterranean country is planning to lift COVID-19 restrictions by June 1st, and officials are anxious to welcome tourists back. So foreign travelers will receive about 240 bucks cash if they book a stay for three or more nights at a hotel. The amount could actually go up if you book a pricier hotel. Huh. You have to book directly through the hotel and not through a discount website. Go to Malta. Why not? Where's, uh... Can we do our next block party in Malta? Yeah. Is yeah. that by Utah? Where is that, Paul? I think it's northwest Indiana somewhere. Yeah. I'm not 100%. Right. Well, that's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, number two, our executive producer's daughter just got a new hamster named Daisy. Oh. And that got us to uh, thinking, do hamsters exist in the wild? <laughs> That's a great question. Well, there are 18 species of wild hamsters in Europe and Asia, but the story behind pet hamsters goes back to the 1930s when a zoologist in British Palestine went on an expedition to Syria and collected a litter of soft and fluffy hamsters. He then bred them in a lab in Jerusalem, and these are the types of hamsters that people now have as pets. But there's more. Some of these hamsters escaped through a hole in the floor, and most of the hamsters in Israel today are descended from this one wow. litter. Who oh, no. knew? Isn't that an amazing really? story? Yeah. Is that a real story? Yeah. We had a oh. hamster in the weather office yesterday morning, or a cousin of one. <laughs> It was Are you scary. sure it was a hamster? No, it was, it had the same shape. Okay. <laughs> and what, what is the station doing about that? Uh, I don't know. They said they would get right on it. Oh, so okay. Yeah. Well, and this morning, all yeah. the cheese was gone. <laughs> Everything yeah. was cleaned up, so I think they're on it. <laughs> Fix that well, hole in well, the floor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mr. Well, Jingles is what he's named. <laughs> yeah. About Jingles. <laughs> we'll get right on it around here. Usually means like there's a task force. Uh, right, we got a meeting to discuss it. A few meetings. Yeah. I'll uh, get right study. Up. All right. <laughs> Budgetary considerations. Yeah. And number one, we showed you an out of tune parody of the Beach Boys, and now here's another one. It's Kenny G and Michael Bolton. Presenting two contemporary artists. One, the best saxophone player in the world, Kenny G. The other, the undisputed heavyweight champ of blue-eyed soul, Michael Bolton. I could hardly believe it when I heard the news today. I had to come and get it straight from you. <laughs> you said you were leaving, <laughs> so you swept your heart. Possibly four. I mean, as a pro TV producer, you're putting all your eggs in one yeah. demographic basket there with Kenny G and Michael Bolton. Yeah. Hoping oh. that people have that sense of humor around What is yeah. happening? Wow. Well, it's awful. Well, I, I know, that's a good way to wrap up the nine and nine. Sweet night.